yo. What's up? What's up, man? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, you're pretty good. Just, uh, it's been a pretty chill Monday. I feel like I got a lot of shit done pretty early, so. Oh, yeah. I feel like mine's the complete opposite. <laughs> no? Uh -oh. yeah. Not this one. Not this one. Dude, but I love the new digs. I like the new house. Oh, my gosh. Isn't it amazing? Oh, I love it so much. Oh, it's oh, like an so oasis. Nice. A St. Petersburg it's... oasis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what I'm going for. Oh. I've always been like a huge, if I don't, if I don't feel super cozy with where I'm living, then like, why mm -hmm. am I paying rent? Mm. Like, you know, so yeah. yeah. At least you don't it. have to deal with that. Like how far out from the city are you? Oh, like five minutes. Like when we went to Fresco's mm -hmm. the last time you were down here, it was, I mean, I'm probably like five minutes from that mm. restaurant. Wow. So you're right from the beach. Yeah. Whew. Damn, <laughs> that is like, that's a legit setup then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As is much it, as how many I bedrooms is around. it? This is two bed. This like so when I was looking at it, they were like, Oh, like you could use this as a third room, like if you wanted to, but it's like so there's windows on this side, there's windows on that side. I'm just mm. like, this is the perfect little <laughs> like office space. But yeah, yeah, as much as I moved around, I was like, dude, this is last time's gotta be the beach. Yeah. Beach you or bust. Yeah, you can't be too far away from the beach. No, Especially not in Florida. Ass. Or it's like, why are you in Florida? <laughs> <laughs> well, to give people some context of who you are that might not know who you are, um, just describe yourself a little bit. So I'm Allison. I started my individualized remote coaching business at the beginning of January. Um, I have been actually doing remote coaching since 2017 um, when I was at a gym in Texas. Um, <clears throat> it was there where like my Instagram following had been like a little bit bigger. So I was able to kind of pull remote clients while I was working inside of that gym. Um, and then, yeah, from, you know, bopping around from like Georgia to Alabama to Texas, went out to Arizona. Um, I kind of took the leap at the beginning of January to start my own little, little business that people are now super familiar with being. Mm -hmm. hashtag beach bum fitness oh so that's an actual like hashtag thing now yeah uh well it was i mean it wasn't like we invented it right like there's mm -hmm. other people using beach bum fitness but um what's funny is like it was born from just my going to the park and trying to adapt from what 2020 was doing to everyone right which mm -hmm. was like shifting everything around things were shutting down so it was like I was just merely solving my own gym problem, which was not having any space to train. And I was mm -hmm. in a super, super tiny apartment, didn't have a driveway, like there was no space. So I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm just going to the park, um, which is just three minutes down the road. So it's like, all right, this is where I'm going. And, you know, eventually you start working out there long enough. It's like, well, if I'm going to go work out on the sand, then like, I'm not going to put shoes on, you know, like. And then eventually there was just like no shoes altogether. And then it was like this girl doing fitness in the park with like all this equipment, like barefoot and people started to call it like beach bum fitness. So it became like this, this whole thing, um, like unfolding around me, which, you know, is, is that what made your like following explode a lot more? No, it's always just been like a very steady, like very slow build. Like mm -hmm. I've never tried to actually pour into it, like mm -hmm. content creation. And like, you know, I like, I'm like, here's a post. I'm like, this is what I'm feeling today. Or like, <laughs> here, learn something today. You know, like it's never been this huge like effort I had to put. It was just me like, okay, well, like I didn't post today. So let me do a post. Right. You know? Right. Um, but you, that's right. We talked about this last time because you, you were like an early adapter of like, you basically just had the same account since like you got on Instagram. So that's yeah. partly why too. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, wow. Man, I yeah. deleted, I've deleted like maybe like three accounts since then. So it, it's had a fresh re uh, reset every time. Yeah. I mean, I've definitely, I definitely have my, my times where it's like, I go, you know, two or three months and I'm just like, I just don't want to play this game right now. And I do, I lose, you know, 
hundreds, thousands of followers at a time. It's like, really? Yeah. 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 Like there was a, there were a few blocks, um, like in 2019 where it was like, I could just watch, like, I'm just watching it, you know, decline, (laughs) which is understandable, right? Like if I'm following somebody on Instagram and they post like one thing every once in a while, it's like, "Mm, no, Mm -hmm. (laughs) like no. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, but then it was, I think, I think what kind of kept, like I said, kept the build going was really just me being consistent with it, which is ironic because like, that's what I preach with fitness. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be this huge thing, right? It's like, mm-hmm. just do it. It's all related. Everything right? we do is related to everything else. Right. It, it really is like mm-hmm. all of it really yeah. is. But um, fundamentally. Okay. Go go back into uh, what you're doing now. Explain specifically more in detail what you're doing now. So right now I work um, one-on-one with clients. So mm-hmm. what that means is... Um, you had a name I'm, for it, right? Individual design. Individual design, okay. Mm-hmm. So where a lot of what is out there on Instagram right now are like six, eight-week templates or like follow this month-to-month program. Right now, my main service is one-on-one coaching. Um, so what that is, is somebody gets onboarded into, um, into my coaching. Um, we put them through a movement assessment. We sit down and we have anywhere between a 30 to 60 minute initial consult call. This is to go over like, what are your goals? What are, what's your history with training? What do you want to do? You know, mm-hmm. How can we get you where you want to go? What is your schedule like? What do you have access to? You know, and when I started this in in 2020, I was obviously like super concerned because I was like, oh God, like I've been doing remote coaching this whole time. And with COVID, I was like, this is either going to, this, this is going to be bad, you know, but as it turns out, people were in a position where it was like, well, my group classes and everything aren't able to work with my schedule, right? Like I got a lot of work from home moms that have these kids here now and like, they can't just. Yeah. leave the house to go to the gym for yeah, an I'm hour. I'm sure you got an uptick in clients quite a bit. Yeah. And time. it was, it was great. Right. Because now it's like, here's a way to actually introduce people to what individual design can be for them. So what do you have at home? What's your schedule? Like how much time do you have? Right. Some people don't have a full 60 minutes. I've got some people doing two to three days a week of 30 minute workouts because that's yeah. what they can do right now. Mm-hmm. Um, So based on the call, the movement assessment, I will look at kind of like mobility deficiencies or structural balance deficiencies, absolute strength deficiencies, or where your strengths are. You know, like if you're telling me that you want to do X, but we're seeing Y in the data, then it's like, okay, this is where we start to integrate all the programming into what you need to get to, to your goals. So are Um, they sending you, are are is it just data that they're sending you or are they sending you videos of them doing all the workouts and stuff? Yeah. So like the movement assessment, training, testing, I get a ton of videos, um, Mm. with the movement assessment, obviously. So I use the app called true coach, great platform, like great Mm. platform. Um, so what I do is by writing in the programming, right. You get, they get to see a demo video of what I'm programming for them. Um, I get, them to send me videos back when there's a movement maybe that I need to see, like if I'm looking for something to happen before we get into the next progression, or even if we need to hit like a regression based off that, like whatever's going on, Mm -hmm. um, we can go back and forth. Or if that client's like, Hey, can you, can you look at this and make sure I'm doing it correctly? It's like, all right, you know, like send it over. Um, And then inside of that app as well, we communicate with each other. So it's like, hey, you know, this week I'm going to be out of town or, you know, I'm traveling these days or, you know, the gym shut down yesterday. What do I do for the rest of the week? Right. So it's like I'm able to adapt given the given the, you know, the the list of things that are specific to this person. Right. Down to it, it, it works all the way from like this big macro view, like what's their schedule? What do they have available to them? And then it's like down to the, well, can they hold a single leg group glute bridge for 90 seconds? Cause everybody's different. Like literally everybody's Every, different. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, and, and that goes without saying, right? Like anybody can be put on a general 
generalized program and see mm -hmm. gains, right? Especially if you go from nothing to something, right? Like all of us ID coaches have minimums that we're kind of looking for in, re in regards to like strength, structural balance, what are your goals and like, how do we get you there, right? Like who, I don't want to say who wouldn't, but like a lot of, a lot of what I do is trying to get somebody to get to a pull up. So there's a lot of just like strength and like bodybuilding style workouts to get into that pull up. Mm -hmm. um, That's, that tends to be one of the hardest exercises to do is a pull up. Oh yeah. Why is it that? Is. Um, a lot of people go to the gym and they only work the front side of what they can see with their body. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So like mm -hmm. you think pull up, it's all back. It's all, you know, lat, like you're not going to get a whole lot of, a whole lot of someone how experimenting. It, how much of that is your shoulder? Like, when like, you're like just your up. shoulder. Yeah. Like how much would you, if, was it mainly, is it mainly your back that you're using to pull yourself up or is it and biceps depending on like the grip, right? Forearms, mm -hmm. core. Mm -hmm. It's kind of one of those, like a, a pull up is very much your lat. So your lat goes all the way from the top down into like your lower back, right? So you get this big V shape. That's like the special V shape that people want to see in bodybuilding, right? It. Um, at least in the, in your back. Um, but yeah, that's what you kind of, because the mirrors are there, right? <laughs> so it's yeah. like, what can I see? What can I do? That's and true. then a lot of the movements that people should be working are pulling and posterior chain. So glutes, hamstrings, hips, single leg work. Mm -hmm. But what they're, what they're doing is just the front. So it's like mm -hmm. thighs and chest and quads. Mm -hmm. and what, what kind of things do you see? How, how can you normally tell when someone's been doing such a routine like that? Because I'm guilty of possibly looking at myself in the mirror at the gym <laughs> or something if I go to the gym. Um, yeah. And I, I can tell you right now, if I go do a pull-up, I'm going to look like a baby because I... <laughs> I have not done a pull-up in probably a couple of years since working out with like an actual trainer, which yeah. makes sense. Uh, I mean, you just you ask kind of hmm. and just ask, or you can, you know, look at, if we go back into that structural balance, like I have this whole Excel sheet where when I put you through testing, there are certain percentages based off lifts that I'm looking for. So like, hmm. for example, we want to do, you know, pull-ups at body weight right and if we don't have that then it's like okay well we need to build a progression into that okay well if you have a pull-up and you have accumulated the volume within those pull-ups and it's like okay well let's start talking about a weighted pull-up can you do 33 percent of your body weight attached to you and do a weighted pull-up no <laughs> <laughs> so when we go into testing right so if somebody doesn't have 33 percent of that you know i i go in there, put it on my cell sheet. And I've actually got it like color coded, like the formulas mm -hmm. to go red or green if they pass or fail this test. Uh -huh. um, so, and then, and then you start to look at, well, you know, like what's your back squat off your power clean? Like what's your bench press off your trap three power raise? Like, like what are these things and how do they play? And then that, that creates your fundamental or your foundation of what structural, like when somebody goes, I want to be balanced in strength. Like pushing shouldn't be more than, you know, pulling. And if we're doing too much pushing, then there's a good chance mm. that your pulling is super weak. Mm -hmm. so it's like we build the priorities based off of what those numbers are telling us, mm -hmm. you know, and then you go, then you go from there and it's like, again, what does this person have access to? Okay. How much time does this person have per day? Okay. What does this person schedule? What is this person's goals? How does mm -hmm. this person move? Mm -hmm. Right. Because somebody might move really well with super high volume training. Someone else might only need the bare minimum and that's, that's just enough to progress them forward. And that's what they need. Hmm. So it's all yeah. down to like individual design. <laughs> yeah. But you're, are you also, you're also kind of working with them on mindset a little bit too. Oh, a hundred percent. Hundred hmm. percent. A lot of people come in and they think that this is just programming, mm -hmm. which is really fun. It's really fun to like start to see that like fence come down, where they're like, "Oh, you're not just like writing me programs." It's like, no, like <laughs> I care about you as a human. <laughs> you know, how yeah. was your day today? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so we do like monthly calls, and 
people, I mean, people open up in these calls and, and I like, even with my coach, like, you know, I started with my coach after college. So we can go down that college route, yeah. but yeah, we'll get there. Um, but he was such a pivotal role in my, in my fitness story. Mm. Like the, the support that I was getting from him that I wasn't getting from friends and family because it was go get a real job, you know, right. like go get something that you can just apply for and sit at the desk and do nine to five. Like, and it was like, no, like there's a way to do this. And like, granted I was CrossFit coaching. I was group fitness coaching. And like that whole business model is set up for the coach to fail. Like there's What's no, that? there's no real success. That? So if, if you think about someone who works a nine to five, right. You've got CrossFit coaches working for anywhere between, you know, 10, $12 an hour, possibly 15, 25, you know, if you're at a decent gym, mm -hmm. um, multiply that times 40 hours a week. And it's still not a whole lot of money. Right. And you're and doing the, but, this. But you're also looking at how many clients you're seeing at the same time. That, that reminds me so much of like in photography, when people are trying to set up for like, you know, like portraits or something like you have like a company that wants to do multiple portraits. I have one of the biggest advice biggest advice that someone's given me is never charge somebody by the time because if you give them like an hour time slot they can throw in like 20 people in that yeah. yeah yeah and then you're trying to so you got 30 people in a class right divide that by one person that's two minutes in a 60 minute class that you're mm -hmm. able to give people attention and to. you're only making 15 dollars an hour yeah yeah, yeah. and then you've got to you like you've got to turn on you got to be engaged like and then you get these coaches that are working these like, I remember when I was, it was like 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. And it was exhausting. And I was training twice a day. Like, it was exhausting. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, you set up and you burn out. You burn out completely. And then that's mm -hmm. when I was introduced by my coach at the time about individual design and like getting into this, this program and understanding that it's not per hour, it's per client. And then depending on what my load was and what I could handle was how much time I could put into each client. And obviously as time goes on with anything that you do, right. You get better and more efficient at what you're doing. So mm -hmm. like, you know, for the first little while, it's like, this is very slow. And a lot of my start to do it. And it's like, all right, like I've got more efficiencies and now I can, I can spend more time really digging in with this client because I know exactly what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, you sit at, at, at the bar across from Picasso and he draws a painting in 2.5 seconds. And you know, you're like, Hey, I'll buy that from you. And he's like, cool. It's 10, 10 million dollars. And the guy's like, well, you did, it took you two minutes to do that. And it's like, no, you're paying me for the last 50 years of my life. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's like, it's that, it's that whole concept of, like you said, like bodies in the room is success for the business owner. Right. It's not set up to help the coach become a better coach in whether two minutes a client. Well, you can say that's a lot of systems because oh, that's, yeah. I mean, I guess you were kind of hinting at it going back to the nine to five, nine to five thing. I see a lot of people, um, I guess more so in the photo creative industry that work more so like nine to five team jobs and, you know, they get burnt out like crazy because they're working all week long from, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes early as like five in the morning because they're coming back from something that night before they might as well yep. just go into the office and then they're there all day and they're making I mean they're making a decent salary but at the end of the day like the amount of work that they're putting into this isn't worth it it's or it's 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 just creating burnout work. yeah yeah it's creating a lot of burnout for sure yeah and it's like, mm -hmm. just because someone can work that much, doesn't mean they, they should. Should, right. Yeah. The working smarter, not harder. Yeah. Oh man. Um, that was my um, whole life. <laughs> but this feels like it's kind of tying back a little bit into, cause it's, it's funny how you're describing everything like that. It, it reminds me of, so for the people who don't know my relationship to you, I met you back in college as an art student. Yep. Uh, you were an art <laughs> major at one point in your, it was. In your life. A past um, life. <laughs> <laughs> what drew what drew you to be an art major at that time? Uh, so I remember in high school, 
Um, my, I would skip lunch and I would go hide in my art teacher's supply closet and she would just let me like paint in there. And obviously like I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing uh, like images off the internet and just like duplicating them, right? Um, I was never like a technical artist. Like mm -hmm. I just loved the, like the, like the, the craft. movement. Yeah. So like mm -hmm. all of my stuff was just like haphazardly. What can I stick on this? Like, what can I glue to this? Like mm -hmm. it was just, mm -hmm. um, so then I got to college. I had no idea what I wanted to do. And our ceramics professor was like, you better pick something now. <laughs> so I was like, okay, like I like crafting and art. So like, let's, let's do that. <laughs> uh -huh. So wait, who is this your advisor? No, it was, it was orientation. Oh. We were like setting up our first semester of classes, like mm -hmm. in the computer lab. Oh, your ceramics in high school, your ceramics. No, in college when we went to oh. orientation. Yeah. He was like, you might want to kind of get like narrowed down. Mm -hmm. so I was like, That's... okay, well, like, I mean, I enjoy art. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> let's, let's try that. <laughs> That's funny. And that's and you started doing uh, a lot more f fitness stuff in college too. Yeah, I did. Like that's what, where it all began. Yeah, it's where where exactly began. were you working out at in Vasa? So, I actually so I was dating a guy in college. I was like really into rock climbing, and at Valdosta State, the rock climbing oh, yeah. wall is inside the rec. Mm -hmm. So, kind of being around him and like everybody else in there, I started being at the gym a little bit more. And then I really wanted to get a job, like a part-time job, you know, help pay for art supplies. <laughs> yeah, for real. Those are expensive. There's no excuse um, if you can't no. afford them. No, no excuse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating tuna fish and gold crack, like, or tuna, yeah, tuna fish and uh, goldfish, like goldfish <laughs> crackers, but like go mm. buy these $900 paint, swatches and samples and paintbrush anyway mm -hmm. um textbooks um so yeah i like i end up getting on with like the group fitness instructors in there i had no idea what i was doing mm -hmm. no clue no clue what i was doing um but yeah i i started doing all all of that and like kind of getting more more into it i wasn't super into it but i was like all right this is cool um and then my dad passed away my freshman year of college and he and I didn't have like a super great relationship like growing up but it was really on the mend like when I got to college that I remember that August through that December it was like this is good like we're doing good hmm. and January came around he passed away I think I took like two weeks no it was a week I was out of school for a week and I went back to school and I got so anal about grades. Like I got so anal about everything that I was doing. I was in like painting one. And I remember staring at this like 10 by 10 huge ass self portrait of myself, like just hating life, mm -hmm. hating it. Um, I got super depressed. I started involving myself in behaviors that I shouldn't have been. Um, I had tried to kill myself because I was just like, this is, this is awful. Like, this is awful. I don't want to feel like this anymore. Um, and I end up, so I, I tell my therapist this because I was at counseling at the school and she's like, all right, well, like, if that's how you feel, then like, we need to go get you checked. So I end up in a a state, uh, what are they called? Like a health, um, a mental health clinic for a week. I was in there mm -hmm. and it was like this huge light bulb moment. Like you, you'd think in there, you're like, Oh God, like she went to a mental, like a state. What, what, why am I missing the word here? A state, a, like a rehab facility. It wasn't like rehab. It was like schizophrenics and like drug out or, uh, oh drug addicts and mm -hmm. and people, i think we just have we have like a uh we tend to think of places for. like that like or, a rehab i guess yeah uh state okay Rehabilita yeah. rehabilitation we'll call it rehab yeah um and it was in there 
where I'm on all these antidepressants, right? I'm just, mm. I am blown out of my mind with drugs. And they're like, one of the nurses come in and she's like, look, like I didn't go to bed for like three days. And she was like, I mean, I was like crying. They have to come in and like check your blood pressure at two o'clock in the morning. Like that's not going to raise it higher. Okay. Like I'm finally asleep and you're going to wake me up. Right. <laughs> Remind right. me that I'm here. Um, but she comes I, in one day. What? I was just going to ask you, are you, did you go to the one that was in the city? No. Oh, okay. Cause I heard a lot of bad things about that place, but I don't think it was in the city. I remember it being like a 40 minute drive. Okay. Um, so she comes in and she's like, look, if you don't start showing symptoms of improvement, they're going to keep you here. And I was like, so basically this lady like Loki told me to fake it, <laughs> you know, like, she's like, you got to do something, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? So I was like, all right, so can you get me the list of, like symptoms for the medications I'm on. And she's like, yeah, sure. So she brings them in and the symptom list or the side effects of the medications I, I was on was the exact same symptom list of the MDD or the major depression disorder that they had prescribed me with, diagnosed me with, I'm using all the wrong words right now, diagnosed me with. And I'm like, how am I supposed to know what's a symptom and what's a side effect right now with all of these pills you have me on? And she had nothing to say to me, nothing. And I was just like, okay. So then there's like these little like classes you take throughout the day, you know? And one of them was on health. And I remember this nurse coming in, she's drinking a Dr. Pepper and she's passing out this packet and I mean, she's a little bit larger lady. Um, not that that matters, but anyway. Um, and she's drinking this Dr. Pepper and she's passing out these packets that are like, hey, like, you know, in order to feel healthy, you need to move your body. You need to drink water, you know, and instead of drinking full soda, maybe drink a diet one and you need to do all this stuff and you need to get sunshine. You see where this is going, right? And I'm like, so then why aren't we allowed outside? nothing to say to me <laughs> nothing <laughs> anybody know if anybody doesn't know who you are you just say it how it is so i could see this like literally happening and like we're sitting in this group right and like you're not allowed to basically like have that kind of dialogue with the nurses because that's like instant red flag like she's mm -hmm. not okay and i'm like so like why aren't we allowed outside and like why can't i run circles around this yard if i need some movement you know like i'm crawling out of my skin right now nothing to say. And then I was like, okay, so like, let's talk about the food that you're giving me in here. You let me pay for candy. But when I ask you for an extra apple, I'm not allowed to have one. Hmm. Yeah. Like if, if someone next to me wanted me, wanted to give me their Skittles, they could, but if I wanted to take the apple or they wanted to give me the apple off their plate, we, that wasn't allowed. Hmm. It was just like, and then the food was just like spaghetti or like pizza it was just like carbs. this. Yeah. So many carbs. And so it's like, what is going on? Like, this is what I'm being told. Like, you're telling me this thing, but like all of this other stuff is going on around me. So like, how am I supposed to actually change anything or like get better when the systems that are in place are doing the exact opposite? Mm -hmm. So I get out and I get out. I bust out. I'm free. She <laughs> ran <one>. around the <laughs> streaking like naked. I'm running around the streets. <laughs> She's definitely better for sure. Um, but so my uncle introduces me. He's a, he owns a t-shirt company, introduces me to this CrossFit gym owner. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, I'm like, I'll try those out. I, I, I was addicted. Right. You get someone who has depression and anxiety and you put them in a high intensity setting where it is a complete cortisol and adrenaline dump. Oh, that's, sh it sh oh, feels so good. <laughs> it right. feels so good. Mm -hmm. It feels so good because you're the one tearing yourself down instead of somebody else doing it to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I ha I've had this conversation with a few of my coaching friends before who had also suffered from some kind of depressive, you know, episode. 
and we all come back to the same thing. It's like, yeah, like it felt good because we were able to tear ourselves down. Mm -hmm. And I obviously in the front of my mind, right. After I stopped doing classes and kind of got into the ID programming for myself, I kept telling myself it was to be an athlete. That was a story I was telling myself, like, no, like I'm, I'm kind of good at this. Like I want to get better at it, but like the rest of my life was falling apart, (laughs) you know, Mm -hmm. like the rest of it's falling apart. Didn't have a home, was sleeping on couches, like trying to, trying to find some kind of like stable home life. And I just like looking back on it, it's like, obviously hindsight, right? Like all of the answers are right in front of me, all of them. But like, again, the story I'm telling myself is no, like, this is good. This is really good. And I'm doing really good on it. But it's like, that was better than, you know, trying to kill myself. So it's like, what's the lesser of two evils here? Um, but yeah, so then I got, I got into CrossFit, started doing one-on-one and then eventually things evolved from there. You know, I had a shoulder surgery, stopped trying to be an athlete. And then my competitive edge or competitive want has just totally disappeared. It's like fitness has become this much clearer, better thing for me. Do you feel like that's kind of like a thing for a lot of people? Do you feel like you kind of need to start taking this competitive side out of it and let it be more of just, I mean, you can also think of it like in the sense of people who go to the gym to look good in a way too. Like there's yeah, just like so I think it always story. starts that way. Right. You go to the gym because you hate yourself or you hate something about yourself. You want to mm-hmm. feel better. You want to look better. Right. Like, I mean, that's why, that's why any of us pretty much start somewhere in the gym. I feel like there's a very small percentage that were like raised around it. And like this, that's just normal. Yeah. Right. Whereas for a lot of us, it's because I need, I need something else. Um, but yeah, that's, that's where it was like in, in college, it was like that moment where it's like, like, what's going on here? Like, like what's going on? I'm spending copious amounts of money on art supplies. And like, I can't even pay to feed myself well. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, okay, well, like, no wonder why you feel like shit. You know, you go home and you Google some stuff and it's like, how do I make it feel so, or how do I make myself feel better? Endorphins. All right, like let's go get those at the gym, <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Like let's get all the hormone dump going in our bodies at the gym <laughs> so that I feel better about myself, only to like turn around and like try to do it again the next day. And eventually you run out of them. Mm-hmm. And then you're back to like, why do I feel like shit again? Mm-hmm. Do you, did you, did it impact your art at all in school? Oh, man. It wasn't like it impacted it, but I could tell hindsight where it was going, right? Like, like I was saying in high school, it was very like expressive and like, you know, got a glue and stick and put everything else like that. When you get to college, you have access to like welding and ceramics and like you have these huge studios built for you to do that. It's like, I wanted to go bigger and I wanted to like, I wanted to throw stuff and I wanted to sit on the canvas. Like I wanted to like move my arms around, like, it wasn't, I was never concerned about what the, the product was, which was why it was so hard for me to like, oh, I so want to get all an the egg. process for you. Okay. Yeah. I had, I had no care about what it looked like in the end because I wasn't good at drawing. I wasn't good at paint. Like, you know what I mean? Like there was like a standard. Mm-hmm. I was like, Allison, this is not for you. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is not for you. Yeah. I'm like looking over at other people's drawings. Like, are you going to cheat? Like, how are you going to cheat on somebody else's <laughs> drawing? <laughs> so it was never like what, and obviously the end products, what we're graded on, but like, I could, I mean, do you remember the sunflowers I did? Like uh, the it, in jewelry yeah. making? I think so. Maybe like I did, like I did. You did sunflowers in a lot of things, didn't you? I did. Yeah. yeah. I did. Okay. Sunflowers like my thing. But I did 97 of these like wire sunflowers as like this kind of uh, memorial thing for my dad. Um, where like 97 was like the average lifespan of hmm. a human. 
Um, I decorated just enough that like decorated, like put things that kind of uh, reminded me or like something that sparked a memory between me and my dad. I think and I, think I remember this them. from your senior show. Yeah. Yeah. Just enough of them um, so that I could kind of then when I got when I got done with the show, I could kind of spread them out with my family. So it was like my way of like mourning him. Mm. But I remember how intense that project was because I was just, it was like monotonous. And I was just, you know, I was welding them together. I'd do the stuff and I'd move on to the next one. And I remember having like this tally mark. Like I was that, I was that kid, like I'm special, but I was like the only <laughs> one on the whiteboard on the professor's whiteboard. It's like Allison's sunflower tally checklist. It's like every time I finished 10, I would like check this off. And so like everyone in these classes would be like, like leaving me little notes oh. underneath the tally marks. And I'm like, this That's is awesome. so great. Um, like, hey, you can do it. Like, keep going. This is awesome. Um, that was always the process. Always like, and it killed me, right? Because I got, like I said, I got super anal about my grades. So like my with art professors can grade, you know, a little bit different than mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, a math test. Right. So it was like, they all saw my process. And like, while the outcome wasn't aesthetically, you know, as amazing as maybe it could have been. Yeah. Um, There's a lot like of a concept behind it. Yeah. There. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, is uh, that's interesting that you did something like that. I'm trying to think of there's so many cases. I'm, I mean, you and I have a connection to Giesling, the photo professor. I love that man so yeah. much. <laughs> I rem I, man, I remember like it's, 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 I think most professors <sighs> so in a, much. in a sense should be like art professors in those sense that they get to really know who you are and they yeah. kind of just, you know, be kind of, they kind of become your friend. I mean, some of them won't, some of them do kind of stick to the that, you know, he, standard. Yeah. Giesling's Giesling is part of the reason I survived that that mental health institution. That's what I was looking for. Oh, okay. Um, he he's the one that he drove me. He mm. was like, because I was the ter the therapist told me if I refused to go that um, that they would put me in cuffs and put me in like the back of a police car, and so he ended up driving me to, I think it was to the police station. It's, oh my God, it's such a blur, but he was there. Like he was there. Mm -hmm. He was there for me before it. He was there for me after it. And like that band will forever, forever have a place in my heart, whether, you know, we go five years without talking to each other or, you know, whatever. He is, he's definitely part of the reason why I survived that, that whole situation. You know, he yeah. even, cause I was failing out that semester and he was like, you need to medically withdraw so that none of this affects you and you need to explain to them why. And I didn't even know that was a thing, mm -hmm. you know? So it was like, like literally he was holding my hand the whole way. And, and if it wasn't for having a professor who knew me individually for who I was, what I was going through that I could open up to and chat with, like yeah. I, could, I wouldn't have survived college if I was a number in a lecture hall. And the, do you feel like that should be more of a thing? I think that there are a lot of people out there who, who are resilient enough to be that number in a lecture hall. I think that when, I think that it's important for us to note that we should be reaching out before we get to that point, you know, like, mm -hmm. like mental health does matter. And you don't want to feel like a burden on people, but it's like when it's starting to affect everything around you and like what you're like, what my thoughts were of myself, like it was ugly. It was ugly. Mm -hmm. So I, so I can't necessarily say it's something that everyone should have because not everyone needs it. Somebody, you know, some people have that person outside of school. Some people have that, that person living with them. Do you feel you like know, what I, I think maybe to um, rephrase what I asked you was, do you feel like maybe people in those positions need to have a little bit more awareness and empathy towards, you know, their students? Because, I mean, geese is a, a whole nother a type dime. of person. 
<laughs> right. Like out of the, out of the spectrum Diamond. of art professors, he is definitely, you know, way over there. But um, I, I think every, I mean, just about every art professor that I had had a little bit of that. Um, oh, yeah. But you, then you start kind of moving into like the, you know, fundamental classes, like, you know, all the math and mm -hmm. all those classes. And you kind of, it's just like a robotic kind of. I think for me too, though, is like, I have never had a problem opening up and telling people what's going on. I've never, like, I had an English professor who I've, I still can't spell. Check out my Instagram. But I, I, I use the, I'm the person that uses the same. wrong your. Like, that's me. Uh, no, same. <laughs> same um, but I, like, I just wrote her an email. Like, hey, you know, I, my dad passed away. Like, I'm dealing with all this stuff. I can't even think about this essay right now. Like, I don't know what to do. And she's like, look, come in. We'll sit down and we'll do it together. What, perf what English professor teaching an intro class is going to dedicate 45 minutes of her time to write an essay with a college student. Right. So it's like, it's like you have to be willing to say something to get something back in return that you need. True. So that's what, that's what I, that's, so that's what I was yeah. saying is it's like, you get mm -hmm. a bunch of students who are like, if they don't say anything, nobody knows. And that's not their fault, you know? But, and, and you can't, not everyone's going to be trained in reading, you know, all the signs and all the cues and everything else that could happen, you know, because even in high school, like before my dad passed away, I was dealing with so much, like unsta totally unstable home life, bopping around everywhere, you know, like wasn't really sure what was going on. I remember at one point I was living with my best friend. She was my best friend. We're on the cheerleading team together. I was a cheerleader. I was a competitive cheerleader. Don't Makes put me a in another sense. category. But I was a competitive cheerleader and I was living with her. And she, put, I, have, I had a bunch of boxes, right? These boxes moved with me wherever I went. They were all my things. It's all I had. And she moved my boxes while she was home one day into the attic. And I flipped my shit. Mm -hmm. I flipped my shit on her. And it wasn't her fault. She just didn't understand. You know, I didn't have anything except for those boxes. Like th those were mine. You know, I put the stuff in there. Those are my things. It's the only thing that's like tying me down to something, right? Like, so I'm not like floating out here. And it was very ugly. That was the last time I talked to her. Hmm. And I hate that. I hate that that's how it, like how it went down between us. But like, you just don't understand what it feels like when you have no one and you have nothing and you feel like a burden on people and then you try to like explain it and people don't understand. So it's like, we circle back to like, if I do say something, is this person going to take it the wrong way? Right. Well, I think I, I look at going back to the professor's thing. And I think just as, as people in general, I think we just need to have a little bit more uh, patience with people because I think we tend to, we do have a lot i mean everybody has something going on more, more than likely but when there are people around us that kind of need us to be there for them you know we're not um we're so caught up in ourselves sometimes that we mm -hmm. kind of let those people pass us up and i mean i think i i want to say the art professors are a different section of people because i mean art has well the classes more... are also smaller and like that part of art Part of art is literally telling your stories and expressing yourself. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, you're doing math equations. Your math professor isn't going to know what's going on at home because yeah. you have nowhere to like get that out. So it's like right. smaller critiques. And then like you get to your senior show and everybody's like, oh, like that's why they were making this stuff. Like this mm -hmm. all makes sense now. Mm -hmm. So right. it's like, I think, I think it's just like, for me and where I was in college, it's like, it was like the perfect, like the perfect stepping stone into where I was heading next because art literally gave me a perception of how to, how to see people, how to look at people, right. how to, how to understand that something else is going on than what you're bringing out into the world. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. like what problem, because that's all art is, right? Is us trying to solve a problem that's going all on. All the time. All the time. 
And, mm-hmm. and most of the time, we don't know what the just problem this is. Before, I was literally just thinking about this before this call. Like, I was thinking about why. It, it, go ahead. I'm sorry. There's like, there's, just, but like, fundamentally, it's just that need to create. Like, mm-hmm. and it doesn't matter what it ends up being sometimes, right? It's just like, I just need to do something to create this thing that's like festering inside of me. And then you do it and you kind of like push it off to the side. You come back to it and you're like, oh. Like, that's why I was doing that because this other thing was like bugging me. So like all these colors and, you know, what I chose to put on this makes sense now. Mm -hmm. So I do, I do this. I started doing this with um, people at the top of COVID. Um, I brought this up a couple of times on uh, the podcast, uh, but I was doing this. I I brought this up to you, the phototherapy thing. Yeah. And um, it was a really interesting, I mean, I'm not a therapist, but I know how to use photography in a way that helped me understand myself better I know the different little things that I did to push myself with the camera that unlocked you know like you're saying that you came back to this thing that you made and you're like oh that's that's why I made that that's why it looks like this Mm -hmm. your subconscious was speaking to you in that in in that moment Um, and I I did that with a couple people and it's amazing to see what people kind of don't really realize until you being someone yeah. who's objective kind of be like hey like okay this is a yeah this look is at a what we, look what you did like we've done this for a couple of weeks now you've yeah. consistently done this thing this is always in the photo you're this is always this color and then it's it's pretty crazy to see uh what art can do to and that's that. like that's the same thing with fitness too right mm-hmm. like people expect to be turned on and like functioning at 100 percent all the time and it's like like I just had a conversation with a client who, you know, his, uh, his rib starts to kind of flare up hmm. and he thinks it's at random. And it's like, no, like your rib, your rib tends to flare up when you're sh- like, when you're coming to me and telling me that you're super stressed out with work, you know? And, and then obviously his rib then dictates what he's able to do for his training. And so what we've done is now found ways to kind of work through his work stress. And guess what? Like there's no rim or there's a little bit, but you know, like the intensity is not. What is that called? I, I've heard this before where it's like emotional situations, emotional trauma cause pain in the body in certain places. What like is that specific called? Specific places. Um, oh, it's bothering. I've heard so many. Dude, parts. I've, I've, I've been great with words today. <laughs> <laughs> that's my turn. Okay. Oh, well, I know what you mean because I. I like, I, that's what I think my shoulder, I had that shoulder, sh- shoulder surgery. And I think that that's what that was. Mm. And like but everything you did- else is kind of like you, it's kind of like you, all your manifestation comes into one part of your body and it's not actually an injury. It's just like your CNS is on overload and that's the spot it's sitting. Mm-hmm. Oh man. I, there was. I feel like there's a name for what that was called, but it was like, like I've a, heard like a talk- trauma trigger. Yeah. It's like a, a lot of people that experience like chronic pain in certain places, like their leg or their back or something like mm-hmm. that. And they tried for so many times, like go see a chiropractor or different doctors and, and they can't ever figure yeah. it out. But then they, you know, go to a therapist or something and they let out something that they probably been holding in because they're the body does yeah. it, I mean I believe the body does hold like a oh lot gosh. of that have you read the book the body keeps score Mm-mm, I haven't. it's such a good book really I'll have to put that on my yeah, audible it's list. such a good book but that's literally it's literally about trauma and and the body remembering what you've been through and how how to respond to it mm-hmm. and how do how do you feel like fitness counteracts that in a way i think part of the beauty in fitness is that there is this constant breakdown and rebuild that is physical right i can see i can feel it i can see it i'm in the middle of it right so like there's this constant growth going on And then when you start to pair that with things like work stress and a, we're going to call it a trauma trigger or, um, you know, uh, unstable home life and like gains and things not going, you know, in a linear progression, it's like, there's patterns here Mm -hmm. and there's things that read off of each other. 
Like you're not going to be amazing all the time, but you're also not going to be terrible all the time either. Right. It's like there's huge navigation process that happens. And so by, by starting to find the patterns with something more physical, it's like, oh, it's not me. You know, it's not like I've got a genetic issue that's like super snowflake special to the rest of the world. It's like, no, it's just like, my priority isn't there, mm-hmm. you know? And that's, I think that that's one of the, the bigger kind of pieces too, is people go, well, I'm doing the fitness. Like, why is nothing happening? And it's like, well, where are your priorities? Mm-hmm. And it's okay that your priority, your top priority is not, you know, let's be the best gym rat in the world. But like, you've got to understand that you're, you've got this much in a, in a bucket, you know, and if this much of it is your career and you've only got this much for fitness, then like, that's just what it is, (laughs) you know, like that's what it is. So like if successful for you is a little bit of fitness and a whole lot of career, then who cares? Is there a way you talking about this bucket? Is there a way to make this bucket bigger? I think sure. I, resiliency. Okay, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. How do you? How are you? How are you building this resiliency in people? Having conversations. Mm, okay. I have. I can't. I think the best part of my job. The best. I'm getting chill bumps right now, and I might cry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. Here it comes. The best part of my job is when someone sends me a message and they're like, look, I just had the worst fucking day of my life. I didn't do fitness. I didn't fucking like, I didn't want to do it. I had no interest in it. And you're probably like, why is it like, why is that the great? And it's like, because what follows that message is usually, and you know what, Allison, then beat myself up for it. And I'm like, like, that's like, that's literally it. Like you, you aren't, you aren't uh, like bringing this grudge with you into the next day because you missed yesterday. You're not beating yourself up because part of your day like shifted the wrong direction, right? Like we do have a lot of control and a lot of power in our schedules, but like sometimes you just wake up and it's just like, today is not the fucking day. And it's either like you can sit there and you can constantly put judgment on it and you can hate yourself for it. And it's like, like, like where's the good in that? That's mm-hmm. not, that's, that's making the bucket go this way. Mm. Right. Because if I'm, if I'm beating myself down before I've even had a chance to get better, then like you're putting a lid on it. Mm-hmm. So, so by, by someone understanding that, if my goals and my priorities are to look good and feel good, but also my life is a little bit unstable right now, I've got to understand that this is going to affect this. And it's going to constantly kind of teeter back and forth until we get a little bit more stable here. Then we get a little bit more stable in the fitness. And I keep going back to like that wreckage of a home life because that was me. I was trying to train twice a day, Like I was, I was beat to shit. And that's when I had the shoulder surgery thinking like, there's definitely something wrong in there. Um, I mean, I did end up having a slap tear, which I could have rehabbed without the surgery, but didn't go down that route. Um, but like I was trying to make my fitness that much better, that much better, that, that much better. But like this other thing down here was the thing that was bringing me down. Mm -hmm. So like until, until you can stop beating yourself up and understanding that like this is my situation right now and like this is what I can do that's enough this hyper idealized version of fitness that you see on Instagram that you feel you have to do when you go into the gym that you think people are thinking about you like you're not good enough to be in here like all of those things are just like things that we've made up there is no actual definition for or definition of success for fitness. Are you an athlete? Are you a mom? Are you just trying to like look good? Like what, what's your goal? That's your success. If your success is to have really big biceps, cool. And like, let's go that way. 
but like, don't be upset when your squat's not great. You know, <laughs> like, well, all that stuff that you're talking about is like the more so the commercialized side of fitness. There's, there's the, the fake, the fakeness marketing, t- all market. the, yeah. 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 The market, That's... like nobody's talking about just like the basics. Everybody's got like the new, the new newest trend. Oh my gosh. I was listening to F45, a commercial on F45 and on the radio. And it was like, we have over 40,000 different workouts and you'll never do the same thing when you come in every day. It's exciting and new and interesting and fresh. It's like, if that's you, cool. But like, if you actually want to get better at something, it's pretty monotonous. Yeah. You want to get better at squatting. You want your, you want good pull-ups. Like you got to work at that every day consistently. You can't just wait for it to show up. That resilience that you're talking about. Cause I think of, I think of something like that with myself where it, let's say I'm getting frustrated with like going to the gym and like, uh, I don't know, bench pressing or something like that. I'm mm-hmm. then my mind's going to be like, okay, what's the next best thing that I can do to make me maybe make myself feel better. Exactly. Than yep. Focusing on the actual problem. The thing that you can't do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, artists, right. We're trying to find a solution to the problem, right? Like <laughs> what's the problem? How do I fix it? <laughs> right. Right. Like it. And it's like, as and I guess like, I just thought that this was a thing that people did. This is not a thing people do. People go, there's a problem. There's a problem. Like that's it. And one of, I used to, I, one of my old bosses, love him to death. He told, he told me, don't come to me with a problem unless you have a solution. Right. Might not be the right solution, but like, I don't just want to hear you complain about something. I need you to bring me a a solution, one to three solutions to fix this thing. And if you can't bring me a solution, then is it really a problem? Or is it like an opinion? Right. Or is this you trying to make one, (laughs) right? Make a problem. Right. Why do you, why do you feel like people like to make problems in order to make themselves themselves feel better? I feel like, we can go back to like childhood trauma where it's like self-sabotage. Like, why are you, why do you constantly need chaos in your life? Why do you constantly need something to fail? Mm -hmm. But in addition to that, you can think about childhood trauma, but then biologically we are programmed to remember things that negatively affect us so that we stay away from them. Right. Right. Don't touch the stove. It's hot. Don't go towards a lion. It might eat you, you know, don't chase the bear. (laughs) You know, like Mm -hmm. stay away from danger because danger is bad. So we're like programmed to focus on negative things, but it doesn't help when social media is in our face. Like everybody else's life is better. Why isn't yours this great? Mm -hmm. So it's just like amplified where it's like Mm -hmm. my problems. No one else really has the problems that I have. So like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to stay quiet about it and fester on them in myself which is yeah. why we all connect to memes. That's why memes are great. Cause they talk about the things that like the nobody's problems. really saying. Yeah. yeah. That, that like, that's where memes are like huge. Cause it's like the things nobody's really saying, but like, we're all super connected to <laughs> everything's fine. <laughs> Rooms on fire. Everything's fine. The, the dog you know? with the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I think about, um, man, I, I just had this feeling uh, before we talked, I was, I posted a photo from um, uh, media day last week with the Hawks and I've literally not had a job in that way since February. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you put it up and then the response to that is 10 times what I've been getting all year on social media and stuff like that. And that feeling of like, okay, wait, what, what just happened? Like, yeah. like, is it, how do I, of, of course, one, one of the feelings is like, how can I kind of get this? Because that, this, <laughs> this feels good. It? Right. But there's yeah. like the realness of it all is like, it, it doesn't come like that. People were telling me all the time that, oh, your, your work's looking really good and stuff I'm like that. I'm like, I, have, I haven't been working. So I don't know <laughs> what y'all are talking about. I guess, I mean, I'm putting up things on social right. media. But, that but it mean looks them. that way. So like people think, what social media used to be was this day to day thing, right? Like you make a post a day, you talk about what happened to you that day, but then it became content creation. So it's like, we got to tell a story now. So it's like, people are now don't realize that they are being told 
a story, which is why like, it's so hard for me, especially in like what I do business wise, right? Like I see all these fitness accounts who have a, their job is to educate the client on what's going on. And I feel like if I get so deep into educating my humans or my followers that they're going to forget that there's a person behind this account who is literally going through the same things without it having to be this like victim mentality, you know? So, so it's like, I struggle with like, am I being too human? (laughs) Right. Like, am I, am I putting, you know, too much but out there, but, but that's the, the marketing like that, like oh, that, that pain that, point. I guess, well, it's called a, that, and that's what people do. Like they, they purposely attack pain points to hmm. emotionally get you involved in their product. Right. Right. But like, sure. but I, but I also think that it's, there's like such a fine line of it being like, yes, we're human. But you have to remember, like, you have a responsibility. You have to remember this is also social media. Mm-hmm. Like it is important for a lot of people, for a lot of consumers, for a lot of people using the product. But you have to remember that you are what makes you happy at the end of the day. You have to fall asleep at the end of the day. Yep. And if it's, a, if it's something as simple as like unfollowing all the people who like make you feel some type of way, then like. Have you ever you done that before? Oh, dude, I keep my follower count or my, I'm following so few people. Like eventually it's like, cause even like people I aspire to be, sometimes I'm like, I can't, I, like, I can't right. because I feel like I'm not doing good enough right now. Mm-hmm. So like mm-hmm. you, you, I'm not doing it right now. And then I, I'll come back later. Like even accounts I get, I get education from, you know, accounts I follow and I'm just like, <laughs> But it's funny that you you say that you tell yourself that you're getting education from, but really all you're doing is just like, oh, like, yeah. And compared to me, that's not that's not who I am. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, definitely and I, I mean, I've definitely, I don't really, I try not to follow accounts where it's like, um, if I'm not getting something out of it, like positive, you know, like oh, like I could apply that, or like oh, like that's an interesting movement, or you know this is my friend. I want to keep up with her life. Like people who follow like 4,000 accounts, it's like, imagine like that's 4,000 different stories you're trying to intake a day. Yeah. There should be, it's interesting. Do you think there should be a cap on how many people should be, how much you should be following on social? I don't, I don't think, I don't No, I think that comes back to like becoming aware with who you are as a person. Like, but that's like, I'm, I, I bring this up in the sense of like, I've always had these conversations about how social media could be held more, res- or, you know, these big companies that run mm-hmm. social media accounts or uh, platforms should be mm-hmm. held more accountable on doing things that actually, you know, help people with their um, mental health. And yeah. you know, I mean, you, you saw Instagram kind of try to do that with like hiding likes and stuff like that. But I'm thinking yeah. of like, maybe a cool thing would be to maybe just cap the amount of people you can follow. So you're not, I mean, but, but it doesn't matter if you're following, you know, 4,000 people who are positively impact, impacting you or 300 people that are negatively impacting you. That's very true. Yeah. So I don't necessarily think it comes down to like a follower count as much as like, like something I've been recently exposed to is how many accounts people are following, or it's like the, the people with, um, with the access and the voice don't actually have like a solid mental health, you know, plat- like within themselves. Right. Right. So it's like, you want to share and you want to, you want to create a relationship and some kind of like commonality with someone, right? Like that was the point of social. Like if I can't find somebody, you know, in my community, I'm going to reach out and like find somebody out there for like weird, you know, who also likes to wear blue shirts on Monday afternoons, you know, like (laughs) there's a community for everything on the internet. Um, But, but there's also this, I feel like there's this very loud voice right now about mental health, which is important, right? Like growing up for, for me, it was like, don't talk about emotions. Like we love each other and we will hug each other. We are emotional family, but like if you're upset or like, so we don't. 
nope <laughs> not gonna do that we're gonna stay away from that one interesting yeah yeah, yeah. no I, uh, that's i feel like if we if we wanted to be this new generation that focuses on mental health i really feel like social media is one of those things that we have to talk about because but I, I also feel like instead of again instead of blaming or choosing mm. to pick apart something else it's like you have the power to delete your account stop looking at it you have the power to control the message that you are reading on on the platform mm -hmm. you have the power to stop checking in on your ex's instagram account to make sure you know that you know everything that's going on in their life now mm -hmm. but like, I, I i think it's more so this the the tactical things that social media has done like there are ways that they have you know try to manipulate you know every human to do things without them thinking about it i mean the most conscious person probably still falls trap you know falls oh no on doubt those those, I mean, those, we're those all, issues we're, every single person we're all in the system like we're all in it <laughs> yeah. you know mm -hmm. but like i i like to think of it as honestly i used to, i sometimes i compare my instagram like when i when i wasn't like like trying to do anything with it i compared it to like a tamagotchi i would feed it and i'd watch it grow <laughs> and then i wouldn't feed it and i would watch it die like <laughs> like that's what it is and it's i think it i think it really comes down to the person who is is sitting there consuming it whatever it is the information they're consuming they have a responsibility to understand and ask questions. And, and I feel like the, hi Luke, I feel like that's where more power lies than asking someone who's making millions and millions and millions of dollars, billions of dollars off of a, off of a social media platform to do something. Cause if they're not breaking any laws, if they're not doing any, any, anything wrong, right? Government legally wise, which I think Facebook is actually like being sued for trying well, to claim a monopoly, right? Right. Yeah. 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 So it's like, it's like if once you create the, the username, you know what you're getting into. So you do have some kind of responsibility there. Oh yeah. Like no matter how woke or unwoke you are, mm -hmm. but even just as a human, as a human, you have some kind of responsibility to become aware of what your triggers are and what, what you need to stay away from, mm -hmm. you know, somebody with an eating disorder probably shouldn't follow a count talking about, you know, what bulimia and anorexia and anything else that could trigger them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, if you're saying like, it's like a counterproductive account to follow in that, in that case. Yeah. Like if, if you know that, Oh man, like what's a, what's a really good example. Um, I can't even think of one right now. Like I was trying to think of one personally. Um, but even like, so like, even like a minor, like a minor issue. Like I was telling you like, man, those guys look really successful. And like, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm there yet. So like, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna kind of turn it off. I'm gonna put it on the shelf for a minute. I'm gonna get past that feeling and then I'm gonna turn it back on, mm -hmm. right? Like it's, there's, there needs to be some kind of, when we talk about, when we feel like circle back to like mental health, there has to be some kind of placement there for people to start waking up. But I feel like the system that we're in is meant for us to sleep, mm -hmm. right? Like we don't want people to actually be able to think outside of the gram. We don't want people to actually like be able to set their phone down and have a conversation. We want them to share all of it because that keeps them, you know, on our platform for longer, which makes us more money. So like, it comes like, I, like I just right back down, like it comes down to the individual and until that individual wants better for themselves, nothing like nothing's going to change in their life. I mean, do Social you media, feel, do you feel since things have kind of, you know, you've, you've kind of had some changes in your life to more of like a positive, you're, you're using what you've learned to teach other people how to live a little bit of a better life. Thousand percent. Mm -hmm. Thousand do you, percent. 
do you feel what does that feel like as far as like kind of feeling do you feel responsible for these people or do you kind of explain that feeling so (laughs) i tend to get like emotionally invested probably more than i should in a business where there is you know turnover and like you know clients have to leave because of whatever like i do get emotionally invested in my clients and for me it's hard when somebody has to go or somebody needs to go or like life changes or like you know the the years are up you know because usually the client life cycle of like one-on-one is five-ish years So like after that like you should be autonomous enough to kind of understand basic principles you know to be able to kind of do this on your own Right. If not, no big deal. Like we'll be here for the next 12 years together. I would, I would appreciate that. Like keep mm-hmm. you in my pocket. Like let's, let's be friends forever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but the beauty of watching someone unfold into becoming more aware of their own thoughts. And I'm not, I don't, I don't say this as like, I always like, I will preface everything I say to my clients this is beyond my practice of scope. Like you need to, you know, go see outside of this conversation, but it's like, I'm human enough and I've experienced enough to realize when things feel a certain way, when we're trying to just like regain that control. I have, you know, I've seen things that people should never see in their lives. And so when clients start to kind of go down this like very vague, broad message that they want to give me. It's like, I'm able to return Mm -hmm. a message in a way where they're like, oh shit, like I'm not, I'm not crazy for feeling this way. Yeah. So like there's this human element that we all feel like we have to like hunker down and hide when it's like, actually, if we would all just like open that up, we would be more connected and it wouldn't have to be such a burden to talk about things that bother us. Did so you, this, uh, my, my thought immediately goes to you, you, before what you're doing now, before you were working for yourself, you were, you were working for somebody. And I feel like mm-hmm. a lot of the clients that you probably have are more in that realm of working for somebody. Yeah. And that human element that you're talking about where we got to repress all that, all those emotions and stuff, that comes, I feel like it comes from those environments a lot. I, yeah. You can't really blame family and like, you know, like that specific type of environment is what I think causes a lot of people to just compartmentalize it all so having a a nine to five 40 hour a week job right you spend a lot of your time there a lot of your time black and white employer is paying you to work yep but like you're not a robot like thankfully i have I, i have had clients tell me that their boss is willing to like listen to them Like you need the week off, take the week off. And I'm dumbfounded because, you know, I'm like, ask, tell them, you know, I don't care, make up a, a, whatever you need to say, tell them the truth. Like you need a week to like, take some fucking time, take the time. And sometimes it's just like, not the case. Mm -hmm. And it's like, either get another job or realize that you are in a position where you need to go get a therapist, you need to get a counselor, you need somebody to talk to who is professionally trained to chat this out with you. You know, and I, again, have been in that position where it was like, my coach was like kind of my low key counselor in a way. Cause I was able to just shoot the shit and understand that like it was still my responsibility to make something come of this conversation that we're having yeah like if i walk away and i do nothing then it's like yeah well it's still gonna say shit Mm -hmm. you know if i don't have a conversation and try and pull ideas and new thoughts out of what i'm doing then it's like it was a waste of a conversation especially if i feel like my world around me is turmoil and i can't and i can't really express anything 
But I also think 2020 in particular is it's like people feel like because we're all working from home now, all of a sudden, you know, we have more hours in the day. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know where that thought process came in. <laughs> I, I hear, I hear that all the time now. And I mean, if, if you're familiar with working in social media, social media, that was already a constant thing, but now it, it's kind of everybody, everybody that's working from home or is able to work from home is getting hit up past work Weekends, hours. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, if you don't respond then it's like, you're not committed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I, like I've got a friend working a nine to five, like if she was to be in, in the building, like if everything was open, it would be nine or nine to five, Monday to Friday. And they got her right now, you know, like, Hey, could you come do something on Sunday? Could you come do something on Saturday? Maybe Friday night, you could do this project. Hey buddy. It's like the UPS truck. Uh, yeah. You can see out the windows now. So it's like, there's always, <laughs> you gotta do it. He's loving that house. Oh God, he loves it so much. Um, but yeah, and it's like, she she can't, she doesn't want to say no. Because it's like, if she says no and everybody else is saying yes. But it's like, at some point you got to stand your ground and be like, because just like training a dog, eventually they'll learn to stop asking. Or eventually if they need you for something, they're going to ask you right. during business hours. If that's not the case and they fire you, then it's like, for what? <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure they could make up some, you know, exacerbated plan of like, this is, you know, many times we wrote you up, like whatever, but it's like, not everybody works to live, lives to work. Yes. I'm doing really great on a podcast. I can't get my words right. <laughs> no, this is, this is me. This, quite this a bit, is why so it's my first actually, one. <laughs> first of many. First, first of, of many. many. Yes. Um, but yeah, so it's like, if, if you don't set the boundary or like under, again, we go back to like your work life is shit, but like, you want to be really good at fitness. Okay. Like, like, let's talk about sleep and like nutrition and like how you're feeling outside of the fitness. And if that feels like shit, then it's like, what do you think this is going to feel like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, like we can make it, we can adjust it details in the programming to like make it work with what you're doing. But like, I wouldn't talk about what's going on over here. Right. Like, I mean, that's, that's like, uh, I mean, workplace performance, like people, you know, are slacking or something and who knows somebody could get fired for being, you know, or at their job, but if they're getting poor at their job because they fucking hate their job and they're they're They can't talk to anybody at their job about why they, they, they're fearing terrible. So it gets worse and worse. And yeah, then they can fire them. You know, I mean, I wouldn't put it past some people that that's what they expect to happen. They just move on to somebody else and yeah, that's a faster option. It's, and it's, it's very scary when anyone, anyone put in a financial predicament could be scary, right? Mm-hmm. Like that oh, yeah. means my roof, that means my shelter, that means my clothes, my food. Like, I don't know where that's coming from, but what's funny is that every time shit hits the fan another door opens and that's so cheesy i hate it when i do that but it's like no it's so true yeah it is it's so true because it's like you leave that job or you leave that shitty relationship or like whatever and like you got to give yourself some time to mourn allison trust me give yourself some time to mourn people all right do it if not, you'll end up in the loony bin for a week. Okay. <laughs> can't share. You can get some skittles. No apples. Don't no apples. Skittles only. No sunshine. But you get some Dr Pepper. <laughs> Diet Dr Pepper. Because <laughs> that's the healthy. But it's like you leave that job, that relationship. There is some time. There's a gap that you have to deal with. That you have to shut that that hypothetical door there. Mm-hmm. And then you have to see what else is out there. And sometimes what I spent years doing was waiting for something to fall in my lap. I chased the gyms. I chased the job. I chased the next job. I chased the thing after that. And I kept telling myself, this is it. This is where I'm supposed to be. Like, this is it. And every time it ended the same damn way, which is where I was supposed to be holding that like a nine to five and I was cruising through life. I am like one of those people 
who is a human and like, I can't keep my mouth shut. Like, this is how I'm feeling. And like, I need a, I need a break. <laughs> right. I can't do it. I don't operate on robot time. Like mm-hmm. it's not who I am. I'm getting very loud. Cause I'm being very excited. <laughs> no, it is okay. Um, but then it's like, I left, I left what I thought was the mothership in Arizona. I was like, this is I'm supposed to be here. This is it. And I'm sitting, I, cause I had just had a, like a car wreck like that October too. So it's just like a brand new car. Hadn't even made the first payment on it. Was in the shop for over a month and a half. Like that's how much damage was done to it. And I just left this job, packed up my, uh, finally got my car back, packed up my U-Haul and I'm like driving across the country. And I'm just like, the fuck am I going to do? Like, like, what am I going to do? And I get, I get back. I always stay with my, my uncle. He's like my, him and my aunt are like my, my second parents. Um, but I get back and I was like, you know what? I went through Christmas and I was still like super undecided. So I started putting out these like resumes. I was like, what am I doing the same damn thing? Like I'm doing, I'm, I'm do- this is the definition of insanity. I'm doing the same thing and expecting a different outcome. I was like, no, like I, cause I was even applying for like marketing. I was like, I'm going to use my art degree. Like I'm going to make this work. <laughs> Been in <laughs> fitness for the last five years. Like, you know, um, and I was just like, no, like this is terrible. And I said, you know what? Like, I'm going to make a post. I'm going to make one post and I'm going to see what happens. I made one post about, cause I'd always coached for other people, right? The point of a company for any trainer, any coach, any artist, photographer, the point of the company is to pull the client to you, right? Like that, that's what a company does as far as like a services exchange, right? You go to a spa because I want a massage, which is where the masseuses are. Makes sense, right? I, I want a coach. I'm going to go to a gym, which is where the coaches are. Um, And I was like, I just, I don't need, like, I don't need, I have an audience. I have people listening to what I'm saying. And I think at, I think at the beginning of the year, I want to say it was like 75, 80,000 followers on Instagram. I feel like it was less than that. Um, I'm going to make a post worst case it happens. No one says shit, right? Like no one says anything. No one will know. I'll delete the post. I'll quietly back away. And I'll start putting <laughs> out resumes again. <laughs> no, no one's going to know. Mm-hmm. Um, I put it out there. I took a leap, right? I never thought I was going to be good enough to do this on my own which was a real fear of mine. I always thought I needed to like lean on somebody else just in case something happened. I didn't want to be responsible for everything. Mm. Right. The end of February, I was moving to Florida because I did the one thing that people have been telling me to do for fucking years. Like, even when I was at like 9,000, 10,000 followers, like I was like, D- this, like, it's, it's all superficial. Like I could lose, like Instagram could be the new TikTok. Like I could lose it all, <laughs> you know, like I, it just didn't seem like it was a thing that people were actually listening to me. I never, it never occurred to me that like what I was saying, it was always just me kind of like blogging just putting shit out there. Like maybe mm-hmm. somebody will learn something from it. One person will hear it. I got enough people listening that I built a business mm-hmm. and it was insane. It was absolutely insane. And it was because I was just being me. Like I was doing, I wasn't trying to copy what somebody else was doing. I was 
thoughts were in my head and I needed to get them out. I was trying to solve for a problem. I was taking videos of my fitness at the time for my coach and literally sending them via email because true coach was not even a, a fit bot before it was true coach was not even a thing at the time. And I was like, Oh, like every once in a while, I just like throw a workup video out there, you know? And I started to like find my authentic voice because I stopped standing in my way. And it like, it's not just like the door opens and it's like, holy grow. It's like, sometimes I still catch myself like standing in my way. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's like, had I not done the things, had I not constantly had a door closed on me or closed one myself or like did the thing that seemed the scariest thing at the time and then turned around and go, what did I just learn from that? don't do that next time. Mm -hmm. And I kept taking that with me. What did you learn from that? And it's, it's, it sounds like, Oh, it's so simple. And it's like, no, sometimes it takes me years to figure out what I learned from that situation. But it's like, you start to learn it and you become aware of it and my pattern and what, where my trauma triggers were and like where my issues lie. And a lot of that had to do with a home life, which is why this house to me is so special. Like it's just a little house in St. Pete, but like, this is a, this is a compound <laughs> for me. Like, <laughs> oh my God, canned food. Like I'm gonna be here for the rest of my life. <laughs> Somebody's gonna bury me in the backyard and I'm only renting the place. Like, because having a stable home life for me was something I was constantly striving for. I was at the foundation you feel like of what you were doing maybe. Yeah. So like it, I, you know, I was constantly trying to survive the moment paycheck to paycheck. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. It was like more like paycheck to last paycheck. Like that's how far behind I was, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, like shit just never seemed to work out. Like I was, Remember when you said earlier, like work smart, not hard. I was like, hard, 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 hard. Like if I'm not working hard, like it's not going to work at all. And I just like, I knew that my number one priority was to get a stable home life. And that's what I was chasing after, which is why I thought I was chasing the best job because I was chasing the money. I'm not really money motivated. That's the funny thing. Like if I just have enough to like pay bills and like maybe put some stuff in my savings, like, cool, I'm good. <laughs> you know, like I don't care. Like I, I buy shit from Goodwill. I got that lamp at Goodwill for $7. <laughs> that whale came from Goodwill too. You know, like somebody <laughs> gave me this little Buddha head, you know, like <laughs> it's not that, that table right there was from the side of the road. Like I'm not huge into chasing the money. I was chasing stability. And like, I needed a way to make sure no one took that from me. Mm -hmm. So when I left the job in Arizona, which was the job before I got this one, before I got this one, before I made this one, you know, it was just like, that was like, I don't want to say that was rock bottom, but it really felt like it. And I say that having been to a mental institution, like, I thought that that's where I was going to be for the next 20 years of my life. And I was so scared of what was about to come. I, I had no idea, mm -hmm. but you know, and then we like circle back to like, what's really going on. And it's like, it wasn't my fitness. It wasn't the people around me. It was like, my life wasn't stable. And like, I found the scariest thing I could have done is what made it. And it could still all be ripped out from underneath me. Like, I'm not dumb, <laughs> you know? Like, I've seen some shit happen. I know, I know rocks can come your way. Like, I know this, you know? So it's like, I have to be here and I have to love this shit right now. Because mm -hmm. if it all gets taken away from me tomorrow and I'm like not even upset about it, then like, that's a problem. Right, exactly. I, so it's like, I, it's just a, like 2020 has been like, the worst year of the world's life <laughs> but like it's been like the best experience for me and what I've 
been doing and like it's just like these two things kind of just intersected I think for a lot of people it was kind of I have had um someone like Zach um Wolf who's been on my podcast in the past and he took this year it was kind of like that too where it like what the fuck's gonna happen and then it literally took him not having work for a couple months to really like okay let's just do something and then yeah solve for a problem solve for the problem yeah Yeah. i mean it's 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 something about i mean i wouldn't say everybody needs to try the freelance life but Mm -mm. i mean it's (laughs) because some people just probably thrive off the stability of like a a a normal job i thought that was me yeah Mm -hmm. i thought it was me well, I mean, that's funny. A lot of people probably feel that way too. And there are people out there who, and I've seen plenty of people that I'm like, if you could just like realize how talented yeah. and how much potential you have, you yeah. could do on your own. Well, just- it's not even like on your own. It's like, well, what are you doing that is just fulfilling? Mm-hmm. You know, like, cause there's a, there's a lot, <laughs> like you get into something because you love it, but then you become a business owner and you're like, there's this whole other other like thing going on behind the scenes that like people don't actually know you have to do, mm-hmm. you know, like taxes, CPA, business license, business insurance, like day-to-day admin stuff. Like I am a one woman operation over here, marketing, like all of this stuff. Right. So it's like a lot of people aren't cut. I built my website. Like I do everything that you well, that's, see. That's part of the stability. Like that I mean for me that's what's made me always kind of look back and say like I mean is a full-time job maybe something I need because I know I'm not the best at that but I think what I've realized in my because I'm the the type of person who wants to solely focus on what I'm fucking doing like I (laughs) like uh, all that stuff like I will hire somebody to do that eventually that I I hate doing it (laughs) Hey, oh, I love it. Fucking do it. <laughs> like, and see, I like, I, I, pre- like, I kudos oh. to people like yourself who can sit there and do the whole shebang themselves. It's definitely stressful. Like, I'm not yeah. even going to lie. Cause sometimes it's, not, it's just like, it's just a lot. It's so overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. It's not so much that it's overwhelming. It's just like, like, I love what I do so much that That's this is where I put my on. focus is on. Yeah. And the second it goes away from that, that suffers so yeah it's 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 there isn't a there is a thing about delegating that i've definitely learned oh recently for sure yeah that yeah it really takes relinquish a lot of the off control me. Right. that's what i need to do <laughs> it's like <laughs> yes, just because you can allison doesn't mean you should oh yeah, yeah yeah definitely try to delegate where you can i mean yeah. there are people out there who still love to do things like that that will work with you and for you yeah. uh, to to make sure that your stuff runs smoothly but um i i really want people out there listening that feel like there is this like little burning desire to kind of do something on their own just yeah I mean, you don't have to quit your job right away. No, 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 no. no. Like, that's the thing. You know what I, I actually tell my clients? It's like, they're like, I hate my job. And it's like, well, like, what do you want to do? And then they tell me, and it's like, cool. So like, go figure that out. Like, while you have a really good job right now, like you're not lying. You're just like going to research something that like, maybe you have some interest in. And then from there, maybe a door will open, right. you know, but well, like, but I, I see there are the people that have like, other interests like they'll be working i don't know some sort of business job and want to do art like that's one thing i see plenty of people who are working for people that are really good at what they do and they love that but they don't want to do it for somebody else like if they could just see that if they step away and they could do it for themselves yeah and you know that there's a whole well some people get like in in really good positions where like you get with a really good company that lets you do what you're good at doing that's yeah you know there, there and are it's those. like those are very very few mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you find that stay there for the rest of your life right. um but yeah there's there's if there's something that's like i just want to try it like to go try it right you know yeah. like I, now that you have no commute time, you just got two hours back of your life. What are you doing yeah. with it? You yeah. know, are you watching TV or did you want to go run a 5k? Okay. You want to go run a 5k and like take your two hours back. Right. 
you know, right. use that time somewhere else. Mm -hmm. no, that is true. I, it's going back to your um, opening the door analogy. I've been doing this thing recently where I've been, I started doing it a couple of nights ago. I st I've been having really weird um, anxiety at night, like waking mm -hmm. up at like two or three in the morning, like kind of just sweating and I just sit up and go get some water and just like, it's just so much negative shit going on through my mind at two or three in the morning. And yeah, <clears throat> I noticed it kind of starts before I fall asleep. And I started doing this thing was this weird visualization. I never, I didn't get from anybody. I was just like, just kind of like, okay, we're going to do this. So I started visualizing like a hallway that has like a bunch of doors on the side. Uh -huh. And every time I, every time I'm feeling that anxiety coming, it's me trying to peek through one of these doors just like peak, not like, you open know, it's like behind the door. Like you don't know it's behind. It's the door. Like, I mean, like there's always, you know, there's, I'm peeking at these little different, you know, scenarios, scenarios. that can happen, okay. right. Yeah. These different outcomes. And, um, and I, I'm not opening the door all the way. If just I'm opening like, the door, eh. I, like, well, <laughs> if I open the door all the way, that's the trajectory, you know, okay. like how am I tackling that situation? Yeah. But no, I'm just peeking. I'm peeking and peeking. And what I need to do every time I start to feel that anxiety is like, okay, you're peeking into that door. Close the door. Just keep walking down the hallway. And then eventually you will find a door. Like opportunities come. Those are mainly doors that are kind of peeked open for you. Mm -hmm. And you just open it and that's there's another true. hallway. Yeah. And there you just keep doing that. I mean, that's, that's literally what it is because it could right. be a thousand different possibilities but it's mm -hmm. like which one are you it's like those goosebump books <laughs> do yeah. you remember those yeah <laughs> well like yeah. what happens if i no? what happens if i choose this one <laughs> exactly exactly no, uh, that's what i feel like a lot of people do i mean you we hear about it all the time when people are stressing about things it's basically they're just formulating different what if scenarios and, yeah. what if scenarios in their mind and really it is it's just if you want to get away from that it's there is something to be said about focusing on what is happening right now. Right now. Yeah. Like I could be thinking about all the other shit that I have to go do this week while I'm talking to you. Yeah. And <laughs> just, just saying that makes me kind of like mm, cringe fuck, a little it's bit. A lot. Yeah. Um, but yeah. if I can just realize that I'm just, this is what I'm doing right now, focusing on you, talking to you, listening to you that stuff yeah. kind of goes away that's like that's like the same thing i was saying about you know a client missing a workout or like you know i have i've heard stories of like you know people in the gym trying to convince my clients to do other types of fitness because what they're doing is shit you know so then like they come back to me and start questioning everything and it's like well like let's have like let's have that conversation what if you go over there like what like what happens you know and it's like maybe walking through that entire situation is how you see the end of it right you know but if you keep going well what if i do this and then well, if i do that and then i do this but what if i do this too and it's like well yeah like th that that tells me you're not decisive about it mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. if you can't walk your way through it mm -hmm. then it's like you know like what's going on there but i kind of like derailed from that but yes, sir. if if you don't do something you're supposed to, or like something you had planned, you miss the workout, go ahead, beat yourself up about it and like, see if that makes it any better, you know, continue to like peek through the door and like feel your anxiety increasing. You're aware it's increasing, but like, don't do anything about it. See, it's funny that you bring that up. There's been so many times where I've missed a workout and when I'm realizing it and I'm feeling bad and maybe beating myself up about it, I'm literally sitting in some time where I could go do the fucking workout. <laughs> right. So there have been times where I've gone like, okay. Yeah. And, and but, you know, there's like, I, I tend to like, cause I do it too. Right. Like my, since I started this business, I feel like my own fitness is like fallen back from where I was. I mean, mm -hmm. it definitely has from where I was. And it makes me so angry to think about the, the performance I was able to do at the beginning of the year versus like where I'm at now. And it's like, it bothers me. Oh, like internally in like my super feminist way, like you're a woman, like you can do this shit. <laughs> but like <laughs> my other way, it's like, but why? Well, it, it happened because I've been accumulating hours, building this thing that like makes me super pumped about life. 
And it's like, we go back to that bucket and that resilience thing. And it's like, I'm choosing to opt in this direction to do this thing without having to, somebody's about to knock on my door. He sees me right here. Is it? Anyway, I don't know. It's just a man with a clipboard. <laughs> oh. Um, and he's going to bark. Here, until go this to, guy goes go to, collecting, go. collecting for billing. Like, that's going to be me <laughs> for sure. <laughs> like, no. All my money's going to be gone. I, I wouldn't blame you. I do the same thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah. But I, I, think, I think that what everything sort of comes down to is this idea that we are our own worst critic. Buddy! Hey, come here, buddy. Come here. Can you lay down, please? Can you lay down? I know. People are in your yard. He doesn't like squirrels in the yard now. Can't do squirrels. Can't. I've never seen this dude chase a squirrel until we got to this house. That is funny. Um, but, but we are our own self-critic, like hardest critic. And like you said before, people are so consumed by their own pro problems that like they can't actually outwardly help or like could, could think to help someone else because they're consumed with their own shit. So it's like when you become aware of that and then you go, okay, well, I'm dealing with stuff. And I know that I'm beating, like no one else actually cares that I missed my workout. No one actually cares that like I didn't do something, do something today I was supposed to, except for me. But it's like the level to which you decide to beat yourself down about it is it's like you do it enough, it's going to actually affect your life negatively, mm -hmm. like not in a good way at all. Mm -hmm. um, but you can still go, you know what? That wasn't good enough. I need to be better. Like there's this, I liked, so I really love this kind of like mantra I've been building on where it's like, I want to help my clients find that sweet spot between discipline and self-love. Let me say that again, because I can't talk. <laughs> I want to help my clients find this balance he's like walking back okay no I thought he was walking back this way <laughs> I'm going to say this <laughs> it's going to work at some point all right so this mantra that I have been building on is something that I have been really I, I want to help my clients find, which is the sweet spot between self love and discipline. So like, there is this like middle ground where it's like, I didn't do it, but like, it's okay. And you kind of lean towards that discipline bit where it's like, I didn't, I, I did it, but it wasn't good enough. Right. Mm -hmm. But like, if you lean all the way into that part where you're like, I have to go a hundred percent or it's nothing. It's like, that's where people think fitness success is right. Like seven days a week, hardcore, everything's good. I've got six pack abs, like the bigger, the better, you know? And it's like, no, like just dial it back a little bit. And like, it's okay. <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. it's okay that you can only do two 20 minute walks a week right now. That's what your fitness is. That's okay. You know, and then you like build on that, but that sweet spot between the two where it's like, we've, we've done enough work where the motivation is now a habit and we want to clean up our habits with discipline, but it's like, if things don't go according to plan, then it's going to be like, the world's not going to end because you didn't do your workout today. Yeah. Your world's not going to end because you didn't do your workout today. Like you know, you still got food in your belly, you got heat in your house and you got clothes on your back. The rest, the rest of any of this is superficial. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and that's from my own like personal experience where it's like, I can't, I've been hungry, you know, I've not had places to sleep. And so it's like, 
dude, life is great, <laughs> you know, but like not everyone has had that experience. And I was actually thinking about this the other day where it's like, you know, people would be like, my dad beat me. And like, I turned out great for it. And it's like, and then you get people in this generation. It's like, don't touch your kid. Cause that's like beating them. And it's like, mm-hmm. I can't as an adult. Right. It's almost like, I'm almost happy. I didn't have this like perfect childhood picture where I was eating family dinners every night. Cause like, right. I wouldn't have this, like make, you know, something out of shit, right? Like mm-hmm. I wouldn't have that. I wouldn't have that want to turn this table into a side table that I found on the side of the road. Like I wouldn't have that like want to, to solve the problem. I wouldn't have that drive to go after things that would scare other people, like moving 27 times in the matter of four years, you know, like some people think it was crazy. I thought I was just costly trying to get something better, because I was leaving a worse or a, the worst of the two situations. So it's like, had I had this like great childhood and like perfect mental health game and like all this stuff, it's like, I wouldn't be this super unconditional loving person either. And it's like, it's just mind blown. Cause you don't want kids going through the shit that I went through. But it's like, how do you get, how do you get a child to grow up as an adult to be like an actual um, productive member of society without having some, and I'm not saying like, you need to be, we have to have some kind of hardship in our life in order to even entertain the idea of like striving for better. You know, like two alcoholic parents, I don't really do a whole lot of drinking. Like, you know, like I just stay away from it. You know, mm-hmm. I do have my nights. Like, don't, don't get me wrong. All right. I have my nights. I'm a human. I do the fitness, but like, you know, but it's also like, I don't, I just, I, I can't imagine not having gone through any of that. And, you know, and even to the point where it was like, I can't live anymore. I have no reason for living. Like, I don't care. I don't want to be here. I just couldn't, I, what is, what's that? I go back to these cheesy sayings where it's like, you know, you never meet a strong person with a, an easy past. It's like, you just don't, you know, people who have been spoon fed their entire lives are the ones who are basically unwoke, who aren't conscious to shit. And Mm -hmm. that's a generality, but when you well, find they're people, also the people like that are also dealing with the same things that we are dealing with too it's like kind of like on the same the same level but the, how they handle it you know is, yeah the the solution mm-hmm. how they how they find the solutions a lot different mm-hmm. and it's it's like if we go back to like if we can find a way to make people more aware of how they react in a certain situation, make them aware of what their thoughts are, make them aware of how to, how to solve for the problem in a a healthy way. Mm -hmm. Then it's like, we're doing our job as, as humans to each other. Mm -hmm. And like my job specifically as a coach allows me to do that individually with with you know conversations with people who think right because again you're only aware of what you've been exposed to so when i can get a client to come back to me and say i didn't beat myself up today then i'm doing my like my moral compass is in the right direction Mm -hmm. as a human not as a coach but like human to human if I'm not giving you something to walk away from in a, in a conversation, it's just like service level. I hate service level conversations. That's why I don't have a Me whole too. lot of friends. That's why I like redid this not... shit. Like it was, <laughs> that's how it was starting to sound. I was like, oh no, no we're, we're going another way. <laughs> we're going this way. <laughs> it's like, I can't, I can't imagine just having like non-genuine connections with people. Same. 
it just seems like such an an ill an ill way to spend my time mm-hmm. and you know and, and I say that meaning like you don't have to overshare just share the things like not everybody needs to know everything you know but there's got to be something there that's more than that you're showing more than to social media you know like oh yeah if if I could if I can hang out with you and basically you are your social media then why do I need to hang out with you mm-hmm. you know and you can still show your essence as an individual but like there has to be some girth, some weight to your character and to your personality that you're just not going to get. Like maybe you'll like kind of, you know, feel it out on social, but if I can't have that connection, like you're like, like, I don't, ha- I don't just go to lunch with people, Bryce. Like we went to lunch and like had like a good conversation, you know, like, yeah. like I just, if I can't do that with someone, it's like, what's the point? Mm-hmm. No, I mean, I think that comes from, I think there's a lot of uh, going back to people's potential. I think just conversations alone, I think a lot of people have that potential to have amazing conversations with, but they're so scared to let people have that piece of In, yeah. them. Um, Ooh, I like that. I like, yeah. like they're, I mean, they're hiding it. They don't want to okay. give any of themselves up. I like that. Oh, you can tell, like I, I've, I've learned to, I, I love having conversations with people. That's part of the, part of the reason why I do this, mm-hmm. but outside of, I mean, I look at the situations where I do this with people when I end up not having like a nice genuine conversation with somebody it's because I have, there's like some weird fear there. Um, I tend to, I do tend to talk to women easier than men. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm learning as this, as we go on, there is this thing that I have been trying to be more honest about. Like some of the men that I know that I wanted to have conversations with in the past, I'm being upfront with them. I'm like, you know, for, for some reason I've been intimidated to have conversations with you, I bring it up. So that way mm-hmm. it opens the there, room yeah. to like okay <clears throat> let's have a conversation then like what's yeah. what's bothered like why why is it like this um i think people need to kind of if they're scared to talk to people but they want to talk to people it's like just do the awkward shit for me like i always tell people during photo shoots give me the awkward laugh that's the most genuine <laughs> that's, the best that's, the, that's the best that's the real that's a real genuine laugh yeah. when you feel awkward and you have that awkward laugh come that's, no. that's real so the yeah. same thing with talking with people like say some awkward shit and l- let that be the the thing that kind of and then opens. like if it totally blows up in your face like okay <laughs> you know like because yeah. some oh, yeah. people are because then you're on like if you're if you're on the receiving or no, if you're on the giving end of it or the receiving end of it and somebody's like, you know, cause like example, like I have run into people like in public and like, it's not a whole lot, but like, are you Allison? And I'm just like, Oh God. Oh, oh God. God. <laughs> I'm like, and I don't know how to react. I'm just like, Oh God. Okay. All right. So yes, I am like, this is weird for me. So like, you know, and I like go ahead and throw it out there. So like, I'm not hiding this thing. I'm not hiding the piece. That's like, I've got to be like cool and like slick. Oh, about yeah. it. Like this, oh, yeah. is, this is weird for me. <laughs> it is for you. <laughs> so it's like, if you, if you're on the receiving end of that and you're just like, Oh God, you know, mm-hmm. Like, what do you mm-hmm. do with it? It's like, be aware of like, what, like, why? Why do you feel uncomfortable? Why are you judging? It? Like, keep asking that question. And if you keep asking why, eventually you're going to lead to some sort of solution that gets you out of that situation. Mm-hmm. That, what's your, what's your interpretation? Of, like, I guess what I'm trying to think this is me at in the afternoon time trying to think of words too. Um, I guess I finally, I feel like I finally found mine. Uh, oh, you found it. I lost it. I got it. Cool. Uh, I think for me, it, it has a lot to do with action. And I think what I want you to do is speak on action. I think action is something that 
really leads to some change whether we I mean yeah you know, we're scared to do it or not the action mm. itself is what really makes that big yeah change. it's so i can i can kind of do this two different ways so like number one i'm not feeling the fitness today right i don't want to do the fitness today it's like cool give me five minutes five, go in there walk on the treadmill for five minutes if you can't get that snowball rolling then leave but you have to move right? If you're stuck in the mud, nothing will change. Right. So like, we can talk about it. We can do all this stuff. Like we can be about it and I can sit here and think I'm doing something about it. But it's like, until you have an idea of like which direction you need to go, you have like, you have to take a step, whether it's three minutes, whether it's research the new job, just like Google it, take a personality test, figure out what's good for you. Like whatever that, that thing is, you have to initiate. So like, I'm like, I've gotten really big into like financial stuff. So like Dave Ramsey and I say snowball because Dave, Dave Ramsey has this snowball debt idea, right? So it's like mm -hmm. pay off one debt, use that, that monthly payment to pay off the next one. And then eventually you're paying off this huge lump sum to like debt. And it's the same way. So it's like, I don't want to do the fitness. Okay, cool. Give me five minutes. It's like, all right. So five minutes turns into 30, which turns into an entire training session, which turns into four days a week, which turns into a year, which turns into 10 years. And then you have the physique you want. Yeah. Right. But it's like, it's that snowball effect. And every time you think you've stopped, right, you've hit a wall door shuts in front of you like whatever that is you have the choice to keep it rolling or you're the one blowing heat on it to let it melt mm -hmm. so all these analogies uh, like, we're, we're visual visual people very you can't just visual use words people <laughs> so it's like if it's like oh well you know like i'm doing the fitness thing and i'm trying to get to four days a week but right now like you know, my mom's in the hospital with COVID and like, I've got to spend two weeks taking care of her things. Okay. So the snowball is here. It's still here. All you have to do is come back to it. It's a lateral step. It's not you rolling it backwards. It's just a lateral step. So like, what can we do in these two weeks? We're walking. I want you to take an hour. She will walk every day. This I program discipline. Which is build on the habits that we made up to that point, mm -hmm. right? So it's easy, it's so easy to regress, right? So it's like, we started here. Okay, I can't quite do this. So like, let's knock it back to this. Not easy, it's difficult to regress. It's easy to see the regression. Like it's difficult to actually go, okay, you know what? I do need to take a step back. This is what I can do right now. And then it's gonna catapult me forward to everything else, excuse me. Um, but what happens is people choose not to take a step back. Instead, they just knock the whole fucking thing over. Because we're like a reset. We're in this reset like idea. Mm. Like if it's broke, I get a new one. Mm. If it's time to upgrade, I get a new one. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, if it's broke, then just fix it. Mm -hmm. If it's not broke, don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you can you can totally back away from it or or you can just leave it co like come back to it you know like but but it doesn't have to totally be gone but because somebody isn't perfect they think that everything's blown up and it's like well no look where like i was i was using this analogy as like a beacon with someone the other day and it's like you know you feel like you're not getting anywhere. You feel like nothing is fucking happening. Like right now, I'm like, my business is not where I want it, right? Because my beacon's like way up here, right? Six years ago, I just wanted to wake up and like not hate myself. <laughs> Six, eight years ago, I wanted to wake up and not hate myself, right? And then it's like, okay, well, like, cool. Like, let me try this fitness thing. Okay, cool. Like, let me do this weekly. Okay, cool. Like, let me make this my career. You know, and it's like this beacon gets brighter, but like you're so concentrated on trying to be better mm -hmm. that no one just like turns around to like investigate where they came from because that's not mm -hmm. good enough. 
it's not good enough for me to know where I came from. We all know that was shit, but like where I'm at, isn't where I want to be. So like, I'm still not good enough. Mm -hmm. And I, I I keep going. (laughs) I love cheesy quotes, Pinterest all day long, but it's like the, the (laughs) thing it's like, be, be the adult that you needed as a child. And that, oh, it strikes me in my soul. Strikes me so hard in my soul. Cause it's like, I am that person today where it's like, if that kid needed to see who I was going to turn into for like, just like a t- the tiniest ounce of hope. Then like, yes, like where I'm at today, that little human would be happy mm-hmm. for even a brief moment to know what, what they're going to get to. So it's like, you're allowed to turn back and investigate. Where did I come from? How did I get here? And as, as you're looking forward, you still have to be aware of what's, what's going on around you. Cause nothing, you're always going to want more. We live in that society. We want more, we want bigger, we want better, but it's like, what does that mean to you? And you can strive for more, but you have to be okay with where you are right now in the seat that you're sitting in. And if you're not, then you will forever, forever be dragging yourself down and knocking your snowball over anytime you have to take a step, one step back to catapult 10 feet forward. So when you talk about action, it's like, more cheesy quotes. I need like a ping every time one of these comes up. (laughs) (laughs) Like the hardest, the hardest step is starting. And, and something I've actually had to start, I was doing with my fitness for a little while was like three, two, one, go. And like, I didn't think about it. I'd like three, two, one, go. I grab my keys and I fucking run out the door before I even knew what was going on. Right. And it's like, sometimes you just have to like, stop thinking, stop playing the scenario and go, it's gym time. Got to go. Cause it's a thinking that like dwells us down, mm-hmm. but then we can go into like this s- scheduling control over that and like, make sure you actually block out the time for it. You know, we can go down the whole like coaching route of, of how to make that an actually like a pliable actionable but the action right just because we put it on our schedule doesn't mean you're going to do it you have to remember why you're doing it so when you're sitting on the couch and you're thinking you know i could really go to the gym today and then you go you know i as i'm sitting here thinking this i could be at the gym doing this (laughs) right is it's like you have to remember why you wanted to go to the gym in the first place And if your why isn't getting you up off the couch, then your why is not strong enough. Mm -hmm. You know, people work for jobs because they have kids to provide for. People want to be professional level athletes because they got something to prove to somebody. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's to themselves. People do things because their why is stronger than their excuses. And finding that why is a lot of what I do as a coach. People come in and like, I want weight loss and I want high intensity workouts. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> Cause you ain't getting none of that. <laughs> right. no, it's like, like, well, why do you want to lose weight? Oh, when I was in high school, I felt my best. So why did you feel your best when you were in high school? Oh, well, I was my thinnest what does you being thin have anything to do with what, how you are being happy? And it's like, oh, well, it's actually because your relationship with your parents was better than the relationship with your husband's. Your home life sucks. And that's why you want to go back to losing weight that you felt like you had been so thin in high school. You know, you it's like saying, why. right. So it's like, what you actually want to do is feel better about who you are as a person. And we're going to use fitness to make that happen. But it's like, let's really find out why you want to do something. Because telling me you want to lose five pounds just because is not what's going to get you up off the couch when you're in the middle of that conversation with yourself about like, I could go to the gym, but like, I don't really want to. Mm -hmm. 
it's a lot of effort. <laughs> I feel like I really my, I feel like my why right now is definitely, I've felt like for my, for most of my life, I've been a very like fly on the seat of my pants person. I've lacked structure and, um, and therefore a lot of discipline. Mm -hmm. Um, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily blame living with my mom that, the reason why I don't, I, you're that father, you, you know, disciplined figure, because she definitely disciplined me. <laughs> <laughs> but it was more so like, I, I just, I don't know what it was. It was just, I always wanted to do things on my own. So therefore, yeah, I guess there was never a structure put in place to learn discipline. Yeah. So my why right now is, uh, you know, having better discipline. So, you know, my home life doesn't, suffer you know my relationship with Kate doesn't suffer or my relationship with our kid doesn't suffer um so of course I'm not I'm not <laughs> I, this is me this is me trying to definitely like push past like okay if that's fucking true then <laughs> what you're gonna do is you're gonna find the most in kind of intense thing to like push that discipline and yeah. luckily I just got to um I started working with um, this former MMA UFC guy. So okay. they've got like a Muay Thai um, jujitsu thing here in town. I'm going to start doing that and that's actually awesome. literally get my ass kicked. Like that's <laughs> what I need right now to just like learn to like straighten the fuck up. Uh, right it, needs, it needs some discipline. Can you like go to the army for that? Oh, I, that's the next step. If, if this doesn't work, <laughs> the military. Somebody put me through boot camp. That's all right. I need. No, that's funny because my my family, my dad was in the military. <clears throat> so like seeing that, that's probably why I probably am like him. It's just he had that structure and that discipline from probably the military. That That's why he's not well, like Well, it could me. also be that because there was so much structure and scheduling like in his life, you're almost like resistant to it. That could be true. Yeah. Like no I one's mean, gonna it's like it's like a child, like no one's gonna tell me what to do. I'm not doing think, that because you told me to do it. Well, that goes back to my mom. Like it was more <laughs> so I I lived with my mom more, so like that's where I was getting most of that from. And then it became this like, okay, but why do I gotta do that? Why do I gotta do that? <laughs> and, but yeah. but what it what you were looking for there is a reason. Mm -hmm. I need something to convince me why I should be doing it. Mm-hmm. And you were reaching out to her, expecting her to give you an answer. And now you have to reach inside yourself to actually find that why. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, it's, it's funny. Like my mom, I mean, my parents and I are always having these like eye opening kind of conversations about the past now, but more so with my mom and those times were like, okay, so there were things that were going on that you weren't really talking to me about and stuff like that. And it, it, it's kind of like a, like awakening, like, okay, I was kind of doing the right thing. I'm me actually pushing people to explain something to me mm -hmm. was the right thing to do. Not just because they didn't want to explain it or, you know, I was a kid. Right. They, just, they, they just didn't want to. Um, but now I'm doing, I'm trying to do that more so <laughs> with yeah. my life now. Yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. think like, <clears throat> I think the, there's always like, like you can hack it, right? Mm -hmm. When are you the most motivated? For a lot of us, it's the morning. Oh yeah. When you, when you feel like you have to work out all day, it's like, it's a drudging weight. You know, like as the day goes on, sun's going down, like the, the, your motivation's the highest in the morning. Your energy is usually the highest in the morning. And it's like, you can hack it in a way where it's like, okay, well, like this is when this is like the most opportune time. Wake up, go do it. It's done for the day. I don't have to think about it again. And then I can get on with my day without thinking I have this literal weight that I have to go do, you know, mm -hmm. later mm -hmm. in the day. So, and, and unfortunately for some people, it's just like, you know, they work from 6 a.m. to 5 p.m. And it's like, that's what they, that's what they do in the afternoon. So it's like, that takes discipline. And for, and for some of us, it's not so much about being able to hack it that way and like choose when we can do it. But the fact that I've got to work this many hours and this is the one thing I want to do today, that's enough drive, motivation, discipline, habit over time 
that I'm going to do this at night every time after, you know, an 11 hour work day. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. That's, I've, I've definitely, I realized that this morning I was like, fuck, I'm getting so much done. And I woke up at like six 30. Yeah. And I, I can tell them days that I wake up late, that I'm not getting shit done. So <laughs> <laughs> I get it all yeah. done in the morning. Yeah. Um, but people probably, if, if people are watching this eventually, they'll see that the sun literally went away it's on both gone. ends. <laughs> like I can't push my camera uh, anymore to like yeah. pull the, the, the light uh, oh, up anymore. I got that. I got that fancy fit. I see that. The ring yeah. light that was supposed to be light. this big, but you know, <laughs> oops. The Amazon ring light. It's, <laughs> <laughs> yep. oh, that's great. Uh, but uh, we're, uh, if people want to find you, where can they find you? Uh, Instagram, Allison McHale, M C K A I L. Okay. That's and, where you, I'm at. and you, you don't have a website or anything like that. Oh, do I do. You? It's allisonmchale.com. Okay. There too. Mm -hmm. Definitely want to tie that in. That right. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate you wanting to have this conversation with me. Um, Dude, it's always great chatting with you yeah it's i'm glad great. that this is my first podcast was with you <laughs> like of all the people i'm like this is perfect <laughs> i really hope i really hope these things like make people want to do these more uh, like uh, like start their I've, own and stuff i've had i've had a lot of people ask me to do one and i'm just like i don't know what i would talk about but then i'm like people listen it's just it's such a weird like what would i talk about and it's like well yeah. allison what do you talk about all the time on instagram and it's like oh Yep, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, these are conversations I've just wanted to have with people. And I'm just using this as an excuse to be like, hey, if you want to talk, we have this yeah. platform. We didn't so. even like, I know we were supposed to get into like wanting to talk about how like art majors and like creatives can start to dive into fitness. I think we're going to, we're going to set up another, another one of these. One. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, there's been like two or three people who are like, we're going to do another one. Yeah. Because I yeah. feel like there's so much to talk about. I'll but to, like, um, find my words. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe we'll do one in the morning. That way we're oh pretty idea. productive. We're just, <laughs> I like how we end with the morning and how we're productive in the morning. And we so just, that's what we're going to do the next one. Yes. We for need sure. to find a morning to do that next one yeah. for sure. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, have a good evening and I appreciate yeah, you, you being too, man. Yeah. yeah. I'll be talking at you. All right. Bye, man. Bye. Bye. What you going to play now?